gun show looks like there is me and DTP on the gun channel side and William on the gun channel on the YouTube side and that's it so our own private show today so uh, today is Monday we talk about guns on this show and we do some other things occasionally and normally it's an open discussion and we talk about guns but since it's just me you're gonna hear me say some stuff and then it'll end so the next two months okay so i've got a couple of notes here um gonna be out on the road ideally for the next 48 days or so uh starting soon so i've been most of the day scheduling looks like i'm pretty much scheduled this show out oh let's see through still scrolling i'm good scheduled out to the 16th of november so I guess I'll cut this one short and keep working on this, but uh, I'm not done. I have the shows planned out and the topics, everything. Um, I have a couple of more things to add in, like member of the day and stuff like that. I'll go check the email. We haven't gotten any emails except for from Patriot in the Dark. We haven't had any emails in months. So we have an email, dailygunshow at gmail.com. If you'd like to be part of the creation of the show or have some input into the structure, then feel free to email us for been open to uh, topics and ideas for uh, the show. Uh, and yeah, we're going to have the show in the can, let's say, ready and scheduled. And that's a lot of work. I always don't like to do it too high or far in advance because YouTube likes to shut down my channels. But uh, I'll put that work in. It'll take, I don't know, it'll end up having taken two days altogether. But uh, like I say, I'm, I've got everything scheduled now. I've got a couple of things to add. Then it's a matter of setting them up on YouTube, and that just takes forever because you got to wait for things to click. You know, when I'm just writing stuff down, it's as fast as I can write it into a spreadsheet. And i got to wait for YouTube to respond. It takes longer. So, um, got that going. We have a member to, of the day, and today it's never enough ammo. If you don't listen to Matt uh, on Wednesdays and Mondays, then... Uh, He's a channel out of Texas. He's down at the very bottom of Texas. Texas looks like some kind of a weird four-pointed thing. He's at the bottom point down by Mexico and Brownsville. So uh, it's always been interesting to chat with. He's aware of everything that's going on. Because he's so remote, though, uh, you know, he's got a different kind of angle on things as far as, uh, uh, I don't know, just experiences and hanging out with stuff. So I value Matt's uh, input to stuff. He pays a lot of attention to the stuff he likes and he obviously enjoys the conversation that we're able to have live out here. Um, I guess he says that he found live stuff from back in the olden days when I was playing with it one day, but I can remember for more than five years now. It's been a long time. It's been seven years since I've been chatting with that guy almost every single week. In fact, it probably has been at least once every every week uh, for the last seven years or something. Anyway, he's a good guy. He's uh, legit finally got to meet him when he went up to uh, Tulsa last time. Hopefully he'll do that on a more regular basis. But uh, it brings an interesting flavor to the mix because he's. we used to be into prepping and stuff back in the day. And imagine like a lot of people, once you're prepped, quote unquote, then it's just maintaining your inventory stuff and it's less exploring new things and sharing that and you know, his interest moved on. So... Uh, you know, check out his shows on Monday. He does a nerd show where they talk about science fiction and nerd things and dragons and things. And uh, then we do brackets or top tens, which has been pretty fun for the last I don't know, year or two. Maybe a year. I don't know how long it's been. But he's been doing the brackets, and those can be fun to get everybody's input on things that we're all familiar with. Every once in a while, that Monday show will turn into guns when necessary. And then on Wednesday, he does a politics and gun show where it stays more politics and guns. Yankee is another guy who does stuff, and when me and Matt jump into Yankees chats every other week, and again, we've been doing that for like seven years, so 
We all know each other pretty good, and uh, I can vouch for the guy. He's a pretty good guy. So that's our member of the day. Every day we try to feature a member. As I just said, I have not done it for the next I don't know, 49 days worth of shows. If anyone wants to suggest somebody to be a member of the day or something like that, then uh, you can always email us, dailygunshow at gmail.com. So what's next? Uh, cameras, videos, and phones. So I'm not going to give you a lecture on that. Use your fucking cameras. Use your damn phones and create content. If not for the rest of the world, then at least for your own family and documenting it for your kids or whoever, your nephews and stuff like that. Everybody's stories are interesting, and of course they're going to get misinterpreted by whoever witnesses them. So uh, there's probably some validity in doing that. And if you enjoy it, start sharing it. And I think there's value in that. So we want to encourage that. If you had questions, you can throw them in here. I'm no expert, but I use a camera once in a while. So then we go on to our gun shop of the day. Every day we try to feature a shop, a gun shop. That's one of the reasons we do the show on the daily. And today it is Herber Springs Gun and Tackle. This is a shop in Arkansas where Ghost lives. It's I think it's his favorite shop. And uh, I was in that Little Rock looking for Titan II missile silos because I'm a big fan of the missile silos. I've been in five of them so far. And when I got to Little Springs, or Little Spring, it's called Little Rock, I uh, was really hoping to at least see some, if not be able to jump into one. That doesn't happen in Arkansas. They all flooded and they're all broke. So it's just property that people own, and most of it's private property with signs and no trespassing and gates and stuff. So after pretty much all morning of having no luck finding, well, I found them all, but I had no luck being able to access any of them at all. So I told Ghost Day, I'm going to not spend all day looking at these things. Instead, I'm going to maybe check out one more where something significant happened, where this explosion happened. Not very many, only two like, Titan II missiles ever exploded. And one of them was in Little Rock. So uh, I was like, I'm just going to check out that one. It sort of happens to be on the far end of the 18 of them here. So I'll, I'll maybe we can say, hey, eat lunch or something, and I'll keep moving. And I think that was the first time I got a chance to meet Ghost in person, if I remember right. And uh, was it? I think it was. And um, he's like, yeah, sure, let's meet up at this gun shop. Because he knew I was trying to get out gun shops, which we we met up at this gun shop and it turned out the owner of the shop was there and ghost was talking to him and telling him about my deal. And he's like, yeah, he was checking out Titan two missile silos. And this guy goes, well, I own one. I live on one. And, uh, that turned out to be super awesome. We'll talk about that in another story. So this is a gun shop that's owned by a guy who owns a Titan two missile silo. So there you go. And it happens to be the Titan two missile silo that blew up. So there you go. And he also has a pretty cool gun shop. It's, uh, in a town that, swells with summer visitors i suspect so it's sort of a seasonal thing and uh it's got fishing and hunting and just recreational shooting a little bit of ccw and uh, target stuff as well so neat shop you can tell it's been there for a while it's got a lot of stuff everywhere which i always dig in the gun shop so you can spend forever looking around and go there more than once and not have seen everything right away uh they had a bunch of stuff like just barreled actions and stocks and just parts and pieces and I always appreciate it when a gun shop just sells, sells things instead of just boring you know, stuff that's on sale on uh, catalogs everywhere else. Anyway, that was our gun shop today um, and uh, thanks to Ghost for finding that one and recommending it. It was a cool shop and there's even better story behind it. Talk about that some other time. Uh, let's see, we don't have a third. Oh, the third topic is looking at the calendar. So let's go over to the calendar over on the gun channels this and this and this and now we're screen sharing so if you listen to this in the future open over to the screen here going to gunchannels.com which is a website we built a while back it's a community it's focused on firearms it's going on five years old a whole bunch of people use it on the daily lots of people come back and visit it not so often and then uh i don't know we've accumulated almost six thousand members over the years and uh on this main page when you log in we've got some information about the shows that are doing regularly scheduled live events we got the main news feed where people type stuff in here and like cody just shared a video he bought one of these magpul bags i guess they cost 20 bucks or so and uh kind of neat looking so uh he showed a video of that clover posted his show ellis is doing live right now with the poster shows over there roosted talked about his last step and making his viking blood mead 
But what we're looking at is if you scroll down the front page of Gun Channels, past all the current stuff, and you get over to the left here, underneath the list of members who are online right now, you can see the events. So we've got a, a list of the current or the upcoming events uh, that are on the calendar. That's what we look at on Mondays on this show. So uh, to remind everybody of what's coming so that you don't get stuck at the last minute, I've been trying to let people know about the Gun Rights Policy Conference all year. It's always frustrating to me to see how few people actually show up to be a person in a seat at this event when it's literally the people that are doing all the work, at least getting all the you know, paperwork done and scheduling stuff so that the rest of us can show up and be there. These are the people that coordinate all that and uh, every year they get together. So it's one of my passions is to get people aware of some of these events that are out there. I'm also an internet guy, so I know how the internet works and it's a bunch of machines, right? A bunch of robots looking around. And one of the ways that they determine whether or not something like this bullpup shoot or something like the Connecticut Citizens Defense League uh, event or the Gun Rights Policy Conference, the way they determine if that's a valid event is one of the criteria is how many websites point to it. How many websites are suggesting people check it out? That's a valid characteristic of a good website. Uh, so it'll get ranked higher when people search for something similar. And we want that to happen. We want our pet projects, we want our Second Amendment advocates to be ranked as high as possible. We want people to know it's out there and people to discover it if they're interested. So um, because of that, we built this uh, system into the you know, part of gun channels. And I talk about it every Monday because I didn't just put it here because it makes money. This doesn't make any money. It doesn't lose any money, but it's not there for that. It's there so that we can uh, get some of these uh, organizations a, a, an advantage. So uh, we're going to take a look at some of the events that are coming up. And you can scroll down here. We've got the NRA Carry Guard. I just learned about this weeks ago from uh, an interview that MW Tactical was on. Mike was talking about something with somebody, and I was watching it, and he's mentioned this. And I was like, hey, I didn't even know about this. I guess it's only its second year. It's in Virginia. And it's some sort of an abbreviated um, national meetings, like the NRA will do their national meetings each year in a different city. This, I believe, is more concentrated on CCW. So the people that show up to the trade show part of it are more geared towards CCW and stuff. But it sounds like there's 120 different uh, seminars during this. I don't know if it's a couple of days or what, but uh, I think Mike said he's going to be there, so we'll get a report from him, I'm sure. I watch that on maybe Ghost Chat or one of Mike's chats, uh, or probably a video. All right, so then we got that citizen or Connecticut Citizens Defense League uh, poker run that I mentioned earlier when I was describing all this, and that's an event that's held in Connecticut for the, the Connecticut Citizens Defense League. And uh, that's usually, there's actually a Virginia Citizens Defense League that started, created like a, call it, a formation of an organization that's there to defend rights. And that's Citizens Defense League part of it caught on. And there's quite a few states that have whatever the state Citizens Defense League. Connecticut's a fairly new one uh, and they're doing good. So uh, they were created to uh, resist some infringements that were coming from the state level and they created the organization there are a lot of active people there and it's a it's an, it's an ongoing campaign it's an ongoing organization uh, so that's awesome so cycle camp over in uh, Connecticut posts these I'm glad he does uh, then we got the bullpup shoot uh, that's a an event that happens in Illinois really close to Indi uh, Iowa and uh, it's uh, so a shooting event, it's an exposition. So you can go there and watch or go there and participate and put hands on, pull triggers of different bullpup type guns. And uh, it's put on by Manicar Arms who make a bunch of accessories for uh, firearms, different firearms. So uh, I imagine they let their customers try out the different products and just you know can pull triggers on guns that you don't get to see every day. That's always cool. Gun Rights Policy Conference is the uh, 21st and 22nd. So the 20th, the day before Friday, is a two-way media summit. This will be the second year for that. I hope I'm invited because I have no idea how to get invited to it. I just showed up to it last year and I'm gonna do the same this year. But um, if you're listening to this and you create content and you're going, then go to that and they may need help. They uh, aren't as well-rounded as we could be in this community. Um, then you got the Gun Rights Policy Conference. Each of the national level and state level gun owners rights organizations will take the stage They'll give you a sit rep on what they're doing, what they see the future, 
what they might need or what they have to offer. Uh, the different um, facets of the community will come on as groups, the doctors, I don't know, women, you know, different aspects of the shooting culture will come up and take the stage. It's all uh, hosted by the Second Amendment Foundation and its parent organization, the, the first organization, the Citizens Committee for the Right to Keep and Bear Arms. Uh, that was built to were created a couple of years earlier than the Second Amendment Foundation, and they together collaborate on making this conference. It's the 33rd year, so for three decades and three years, Alan Gottlieb has been putting this together to get the gun owners' rights organizations together so that we can network, so that we can strategize, so that we can get on track and ideally resist the money and the influence that you know, the Bloombergs are able to throw at their agenda. So it's awesome. It's one of the most exciting, most interesting things I do in firearms, and I've done some stuff. So highly encourage you to check it out. Uh, it's it's in, I don't know, invigorating. Maybe that's the right word. Then you got the tri-state full auto shoot. This is in the panhandle of Oklahoma, which is stacked on top of the panhandle of Texas. So it's in the panhandle stack. And I have nothing, I know nothing about it other than it's going to happen on the same date as the Gun Rights Policy Conference. And uh, thanks to Snob for posting that one. I never even knew about it. Try to put it on the calendar like this, and then it'll be on here next year and next year. So if they keep having the event, hopefully it won't uh, conflict with something else and we can check it out. This probably seems like a good time of year to go out for a full auto shoot. So the other Oklahoma full auto shoot is called the Fast Shoot. That's the weekend after Father's Day, and it's super hot. I think this one would be a little more pleasant. Next is in, I don't remember where it is, South Carolina or North Carolina or someplace down there, maybe Virginia, is the uh, Southeast hmm, Southeast Outdoor Publisher Association or something like that. And it looks like the conference will be in Florence this year on October 3rd. And this is an old organization that has been uh, um, helping uh, writers, outdoor writers, uh, do their gig and give them press credentials so it's worth checking out that's how it got on my radar i was looking up press credentials one day and this is a valid outdoors press credential you could get so if you're looking to impress somebody to do a video or do an interview or something and you want to have some validity then consider getting yourself some press credentials it's not doesn't have much cost and it'll give you some credibility or maybe some self-confidence press credentials are little cards but sometimes they can they can help out quite a bit used them successfully in the past. I don't always go to them, but every once in a while, you know, you get the right person who is impressed by them. And if you're doing press work, might as well have some credentials. Uh, next up is the Knob Creek machine gun shoot, another exposition shoot and uh, spectator event. So a lot of people bring out their machine guns and they shoot them. I believe there's rentals there. I've never actually been to it. And uh, there's sometimes a gun show there, which I've heard good things about. So that's in Knob Creek, Kentucky. Uh, then you get the National Outdoor Sporting Goods, no, National Association of Sporting Goods Wholesalers, which is very much like SHOT Show, but a little smaller. That happens in October, and I forget where, maybe Kansas or someplace. Uh, then you get the Big Sandy Machine Gun Shoot, which is where my tour will wrap up. That's in kind of northern Arizona in October. So there's just a sample of the stuff that's in the calendar. If you go to the top of gun channels and click on events, you don't need to be a member. You don't need to be logged in. Uh, gun channels is a resource we're building it as a tool for the world so people that use gun channels help create it but the results of that creation are there for everybody and the events are one of those aspects to it so while you as a member get a chance to create something they're going to still see this but without the add of thing and that way they can see not just the stuff we talked about but all the stuff we got going into the future so feel free to add anything that you participate in anything you wish you were uh, able to attend or whatever because like i say there's there's methods to our work over here. All right, so that was our uh, taking a look at the what's coming up. Uh, we already talked about that bull pup shoot, which is coming up on September 15th. Highly recommend that. And again, I'll reiterate, the Gun Rights Policy Conference is coming up on the 21st. If you do travel at all during the year, you have a little extra time or money to do something like travel, and it's potential for you, highly recommend it. I can't imagine I mean, I know what it's like to run a podcast and not have anybody show up, but I don't know what it's like to run a gun owner's rights organization for 33 years and have very few people show up when you offer to feed them and uh, entertain them and educate them. So I imagine it's super uh, good for those guys to see a full house, right? So it's September 3rd. Go into the history real quick. 
uh, in my history over on uh, the gun calendars.com we have it is uh, open right here it is um, Roy Weatherby's birthday he was 77 years old he was born today in 1910 it's amazing so he's born in 1910 eight years older than my grandpa and that guy was not satisfied with the current selection of firearms and ammunition at the time so he developed quite a few hunting rounds Eventually, he created uh, actions and, and firearms to go around them. He gained a reputation for building a nice-looking, well-work, you know, good-working, high-power uh, rifle, and ended up running a really interesting, successful business out of California. So, uh, whether it be born today in uh, 1910. So, today in further back history, 1777, the American flag was flown in battle for the first time during a Revolutionary War skirmish at Cooch's Bridge. So thanks Cooch for having a bridge so that we could kick the shit out of the British on it. Uh, 17, I think we were kicked the shit out of them, let's find out. Brandywine, blah, 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 three months before, blah, 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 Congress enacted, doesn't say, I'm assuming we kicked the shit out of them. We don't have to read all this, let's assume that. Um, try to do, do you can have be super boring as I go through and read all these. So here's an interesting one for all you sons of bitches that live in Michigan. 1783, Mackinac Island, which I believe is the island where you don't allow vehicles, passed into U.S. hands following the Paris Peace Treaty. So today in 1783, the Michiganers stole that island from the French who were just minding their own business, trying to eat cheese or wine or whatever they do on there. Michigans weren't satisfied with Wisconsin. They needed that island, so they pushed the French off of there. But nobody cares. Uh, War Party in 1812, mostly Shawnee, but possibly some Delaware Potawatomis, made a surprise attack on Pigeon Roost, Indiana. So there you go. If you live in Pigeon Roost, today is the day of the slaughter of the Potawatomis. Mm. 1838, future abolitionist Frank Douglas escaped from slavery. Right on. Some Confederate general did something in Kentucky. USS Essex did something also in 1862. What's all this about? 1864, President Lincoln ordered a hundred gun salute at the Washington Navy Yard at noon on Monday, the 5th of September. And upon receipt of the order, each arsenal in the Navy Yard for the recent brilliant achievements of the fleet and land forces. What the hell? Blah, blah, blah. The president of the of Sunday Thanksgiving. I don't know what that's all about. Lincoln made 100 guns go off. Orville Wright began two weeks of flight trials that impressed onlookers with his complete control of a new Type A military flyer. So in 1908, looks like Orville Wright impressed a bunch of people flying around. Today in 1918, the United States recognized the nation of Czechoslovakia, right before the Russians took it, I guess. Hitler invaded Poland. Oh, shit. They, Hitler, or no, in response to Hitler invading Poland and blah, 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 both allies overrun and declare war on Germany. Right on. Some British ship got destroyed. That is, don't know what that is, first combat employment of a missile guided by radio and television takes place when a Navy drone liberator controlled by some guy in a PV flew to attack a German submarine on some island. So 1944, the first missile guided radio, missile guided by radio and television. I wonder if that means they could see what was happening as that missile went flying. 1944. The water gate team broke into some psychiatrist's office. Have you ever read uh, Will by G. Gordon Liddy? Interesting book. Let's see, 1976, the unmanned U.S. spacecraft Viking 2 landed on Mars to take the first close-up color photographs of the planet's surface. States lost 27 cruise missiles that selected air defense target at Iraq for punishment for Iraq's inv invasion of Kurdush. Don't invade Kurdush around us. All right, so a bunch of other stuff happened that was more modern, but it's not as interesting. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight Medal of Honors today. All right, thanks to Dead Horse for giving us that link. I think it's always interesting to go through some of today's history uh, because you never know when you're going to be somewhere and somebody's going to say something and you'll be able to act like Big Shot, like you know something more than them. And then maybe you'll win them over and maybe they'll let you shoot their gun, marry their daughter. You never know what kind of awesome stuff will happen because we do the history stuff on this show. Uh, with that, we do a show on every day, right? And we put that show on iTunes pretty much once a week. And... I am trying to open this in iTunes so that I can go look at the thing that people have been writing about it. How about I don't download iTunes right now? So I do appreciate the people who have given us some recent ratings because it's a pain in the butt to go to iTunes. I, I realize that. We've got uh, five reviews now, and it has a little 10 there, a little star. So I guess we've got five stars and... Couple of reviews. So our last review is August fifteenth, which is from Dano. So does that even count? Our own host has happened to write our own review. So firearms topic for each day of the week are different, and they keep room for topics that are timely as well. That's not true. I try to not do that. Primary host and a co-host, co-hosted by a cast. Many each show is different, so you'll not get repeats. Only topics of that day and topical events. Oh, shills zone here. Nice. Well, yes, that was a helpful review. Then we got one from, I don't know how to say that. If you are into guns, this podcast is for you. Very informative and entertaining. Thank you. Another one on August 15th. Everyone should check out this great podcast. Just real life stuff. Always good topics. Awesome. That's actually, I appreciate those. That's what we're trying to do. And that's, I guess, the goal is to tell all the stupid people that use iTunes. Well, sorry, all the people that use stupid iTunes. I should say it that way. Um, that, you know, we don't suck and we're good. So thanks for that. Our, let's see, June, July. We hadn't had one for two months before those last three. So I appreciate people that dropped those three on us. We are up to 10 ratings and five reviews. So the way that iTunes works is they only like the cool kids, the popular kids. So to make us popular, we got to have a bunch of ratings and reviews over there. So I have to once in a while bug people to Install stupid iTunes, because I'm pretty sure you have to do it from stupid software. Uh, check out our show. If you do like the show, give it a review and a thumbs up or whatever. And if you don't like it, give us a review anyway, because the reviews help out. And then uh, don't give us a thumbs up. And instead, or even if you do like our show, we encourage you to go lower down on the page, and you'll get recommendations. Like now they're recommending CloverTac. They're recommending something called Arms Room Radio. Never heard of it. They're recommending something called Various Calibers, another blog I've never heard of, something called Junior Shooting, and something called Firearms Chat. So a couple of different, sounds like same kind of stuff, which amazing is what they, uh, they're recommending stuff that's similar. So anyway, we appreciate it when people give us reviews, but since it was such a pain in the ass to give us a review, consider checking out some of those other shows, especially the ones on gun channels, but there are some good ones out there. I just come across James Kalita, I think his name, Kalata, something like that, and uh, some guy from New Jersey who does a bunch of podcasts that are pretty good. Never heard of them. Doesn't you know, put a lot of advertising out there, so you might find something neat. Uh, let's see. I guess that's about it. That was our show. It goes quicker when I'm just sitting here by myself. Still just managed to cram it into a half an hour. So uh, appreciate the people that do turn in live. How many people out there? About Sixteen people. They meet. So uh, continue to try to figure out a way to do these while I'm on the road and appreciate the people that want to stick around and watch actual live chat happen instead of some pre-programmed thing. And I don't have any kind of song to go out on, so I'll get that going while no co-hosts say anything. And then I will figure out where I have my stuff at eventually. The little stuff I get to do while somebody else is blabbing. They, they do all the work, and then I just get to sit over. Oh, that video's gone. I forgot. Uh, this, we'll just end it with this one. All right, so I'll shut up. We can move this over here, and we'll see you tomorrow. The guys and gals of gunwebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thanks for watching gunwebsites.com.